Hey, this is Brandon with Taylor's Fire and Smoke Cooking. Do you know what today is? Fish Fry Friday. We see all these people doing fish plates. I'm going to show you how fish plates were done when I was growing up. Let's go ahead and get into this cook. All right, guys. First uh, things first, we're going to make spaghetti as one of the sides. Now, you may be like fish and spaghetti. Here in the St. Louis area, it goes together like peanut butter and jelly. So I've got my tomato paste, my can of puree tomatoes. I've got some garden-ready tomatoes, minced garlic, uh, green pepper, and onion. And of course, I've got the ground beef uh, browning right now. This is a variation uh, of the homemade spaghetti sauce or uh, spaghetti and meat sauce that I made in a different video, which you can see right up top on the i card if you're interested. It's, um, like I say, it's another variation. It's a little bit different, a little bit easier. Um, since I'm not, this is not going to be the main dish, it's going to be a side. So, um, similar to the last time, you, you get your ground beef browning, you add your green pepper and onion in there with a little bit of salt. This is 80-20 ground beef, maybe even 85-15, so it's super lean, and I'm not going to worry about draining. As you can see, there's hardly any oil in the bottom of the pan. So after that, we get it browned up. We're just going to add in um, a couple tablespoons of tomato paste. And we're going to go ahead on and, you know, get that mixed up and incorporated pretty well. Um, again, when we grew up, when I grew up, and even to this day, fish and spaghetti goes together all the time. We actually just had fish and spaghetti for dinner the other day, again. So it's nothing new here. And growing up, when we have fish plates, especially at church, you would have, you know, your fish. Then you, your sides would normally be coleslaw or potato salad, green beans and spaghetti, you just get to choose whichever ones you want. It's not always fish and hush puppies, which you get now in every fish plate. These were real dinners. So got my tomato paste in incorporated, adding in some minced garlic. Now we're gonna go ahead on and add in those tomatoes. Now you can leave these out if you like to. I do like having a couple chunks of tomatoes in my spaghetti sauce, I think it's delicious. And then I've got my uh, pureed uh, tomatoes as well going in here. And we're just going to bring this to a simmer, season it to taste, um, add in whatever you want. We have salt, pepper, garlic, complete seasoning, a little Italian seasoning, and uh, we're going to use a little honey to sweeten it up, just like we did on the last video. So, But season your spaghetti to taste, but the gist is spaghetti is going to be one of the sides. So like I said, just make it how you, want it, uh, how you normally make your spaghetti, and um, we'll go from there. Now, as a kid, like I said, in the St. Louis area, in the I'll say in the Midwest because I did see Mama Ray Ray. She's done fish and spaghetti too. Um, so in the Midwest, that's a popular thing. Um, I'm not sure about you know where you guys live if you've ever had it, but it, like I said, it's it, it's amazing. You may say, well, that's two main dishes, but no, it, it's a side when you want it to be. Chicken and spaghetti is is fried chicken and spaghetti. We do that sometimes as well. So. Just depends on where you grew up, I guess. But it's amazing, and I guarantee you, if you tried it, you will love it. I mentioned Italian season. I forgot I didn't have any, so we're just using basil, rosemary, and some herbs like that to get that uh, that flavor in there that we're looking for. All right, we're gonna add in a little black pepper. Get that incorporated. And again, this is just, you know, season it the way you like. Um, this is the way I like to season my spaghetti. And then we have some more garlic. Now we love, love, love garlic in our pasta sauce, so we go a little heavier with the garlic than you may. But that's, you know, totally up to you. So all we're gonna do now is cover this up and let this simmer uh, for a little while. Now we're gonna get into this fish. This fish I have already cleaned. And I've cut, what I have here, I have some tilapia and I have some catfish fillet, uh, fillets, fresh catfish fillets. What I like to do with my tilapia, if they're really big, I just take them and I cut them right down the center. So now like you see here, you'll have that chunkier, thicker piece and then on the other side, it's kind of a skinnier piece. As far as the catfish fillets are concerned, um, I like making catfish nuggets. Now normally when if you buy catfish nuggets from the store, that's made from the belly meat just kind of like the uh, byproduct of the catfish. And they're good, but sometimes they have that really fishy taste and they're not really good. Well, when you make nuggets from your fillets, 
you don't have to really worry about that. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take my fillets and I'm going to just cut them into strips or little nuggets. Now you can make the nuggets as big or as small if you, as you want, but that's what I've done here and I've done that with all my fish. So we have tilapia and catfish uh, nuggets that we're doing today. My breading I'm using is the Zatarans breading and I'm going to put some cornmeal in that. That Zatarans is a little heavy on the flour and I like a little bit more cornmeal in my batter. Also, we're going to season it up with some Tony Sachery's Creole seasoning, some black pepper, and some garlic. This seasoning, this breading is lightly seasoned, but like I said, it's lightly seasoned, so we want to add, make sure we add some more seasoning to that breading. Make sure it has a really, really nice flavor. We got a couple cups of that breading, and like I said, I'm just going to add in this cornmeal. I do like having a little bit crunchier fish, especially when you're dealing with fish like catfish, where it's a little, um, it's not as firm of a fish. You, you know, I like to have a little bit crispier exterior. So we're going to hit it pretty heavy with a couple tablespoons or teaspoons rather of the Tonys, our black pepper, and then we're going to hit it with some garlic. I'm just eyeballing, I've done this so many times, I kind of got a gauge of what I want the uh, the amounts to be as far as the flavoring. If you're a little bit, you know, um, lost on that, just go ahead and get a little bit of a pinch and stick it on your tongue. It's not going to hurt anything and you'll see if you need to add any more salt or anything to that. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and hit some mustard in here as a binder. You don't, it doesn't take a ton and you just mix it up real well. You're not going to taste the mustard whatsoever, but it does act as a binder uh, for your seasoning. Everything sticks to it really well. So you could call it, you know, mustard fried fish if you'd like to. It's more just a binder though. And then we're going to season our fish as well. So we, may, we want to make sure that our fish is good and seasoned. So again, the same seasonings that we did in the uh, batter. Some Tony's, our black pepper, and hit it really, I mix it really well. A little bit more black pepper, a little bit more Tony's. In this bowl, I've probably I got it close to five pounds of fish, so you know it's not. You may think it's seasoning heavy. I buy, it's not at all. Not at all. Now you can see if you look at the fish, it's just just right. It's not overly seasoned or got tons of uh, seasoning on it, but it's going to be just right. All right, let's check back on this sauce. I've had it uh, cooking down. Now this is the consistency I like with my spaghetti. I did taste it, we're just adding a little bit of more uh, salt to that. Now here's that honey like I talked about earlier. You don't, it doesn't take a ton of honey, but when you're using all that tomato, you don't want that acid flavor. So you just add a little bit of honey in there and it's gonna cut through that acid. It's not gonna make the sauce sweet, but it's gonna cut that uh, acidic flavor out of that uh, sauce where it's a nice, gives it a nice balance. Got plenty of meat in there. To, uh, you can see those tomatoes in there, the green pepper and onion. I like a little bit of a chunkier sauce, so that's what we got going on here. And everything is coming together really well. Give it one last taste to make sure we're good there. we're good all right guys it's time to get into this fish all right we're just going to put our fish into that batter I've got my oil at 375 degrees and I try to keep it around that temperature when I'm frying if you don't want your fish boiling you want it to start frying as soon as it hits that oil and you know when you load it up it's going to drop a few degrees but it'll come right back up so 375 degrees get it coated really well you can see how that uh, batter is sticking to that fish and that's because we did put that mustard on there. 
and now we're just gonna drop it in. I am deep frying today. You can pan fry if you, if you'd like to. With fish, it's not really a big deal. It's not hard to really fry fish. Just make sure your, your oil is at the right temperature. You don't want your oil too hot. Otherwise, you'll burn the outside up pretty quickly or you don't want it uh, not hot enough, then you'll kind of boil your fish and when you take it out, it'll be kind of greasy and not crispy enough. All right, we've had this fish rolling now for about five minutes. You can see how it's looking. That batter is looking nice and crispy on the outside, but we're gonna go a little bit longer. That particular piece, that was a piece of tilapia. This here is one of those catfish nuggets. Um, you know, when you cook nuggets, they kind of curl up a little bit and, and they, or they'll roll up. You can tell the difference, but they're looking really, really good, nice and crispy. Golden brown, exactly how we want it. So we got some tilapia and we got some uh, catfish, guys. And it's gonna be fine. All right, time to pull this fish. Fried it up. Depend on the pieces, you're looking at eight to 10 minutes, if that. Uh, we were frying some of those thicker pieces of tilapia went a little bit longer. The skinnier ones a little shorter. And of course the catfish, but uh, you'll know when it's ready. When it begins to float. Once it starts floating, let it go another couple minutes. Then you'll know you're good. That outside is nice and crispy. You'll know you're good. Uh, oil is still rolling at 375 so now when we put our new fish in you see it starts frying immediately and again this is a, our second batch good to go here's our spaghetti we got it all mixed up and ready to plate up we're just going to pull those last couple pieces of fish out everything is looking really really good y'all I can't wait this is one of my favorite meals, my all-time favorite meals. Like I said before, is fried pork chops, fried potatoes, and cream corn, but fish and spaghetti is not far behind. Like if you're from the, the Midwest, do y'all eat fish and spaghetti? Let me know in the comment section. I know I can't be alone. Here we go, guys. Look at that fish. Look at that. We got our tilapia, we've got our catfish, everything is fried up to perfection. Now we're going to make a plate. Now this is our plate. I got potato salad on one side, spaghetti on the other. Like I said, growing up sometimes you might want green beans and coleslaw. You might want green beans and potato salad or green beans and uh, coleslaw and spaghetti. It's up to you. But this is what I wanted. I had some spaghetti left over for some barbecue and it was perfect with this. So we're loading it up. We got some catfish going on. A couple pieces uh, of tilapia. And again, growing up, you always had to put you two pieces of white bread in the bottom of your plate. Then you stack your fish on top of the white bread. We got some pickle and onion. You can't have some fried fish without pickle and onion. You put your couple pieces of onion in that plate. Some dill pickle. Now, some people I've seen have done sweet pickles but I don't like sweet pickles now you got your container of tartar sauce little container of hot sauce and that's a Midwest fish plate right there guys that's what we grew up eating that's what I still eat to this day there are still some places around that do fish plates like this it's not always just your hush puppies and french fries try it guys you'll love it if you enjoy watching the video, please make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share the video out. Let me know down in them comment sections. How did you guys grow up eating your fish uh, dinners? Was it always just fish and uh, hush puppies and fries or anything like that? Or did you guys grow up eating fish and spaghetti like us or like me? Uh, once again, guys, I appreciate you all. Till the next time, you guys have a great one and God bless.